these these particular topics. And so as we finish up with Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to talk about what I consider to be one of the most important portions, uh, uh, I should say important topics of scripture, and that is family life. Right? And dealing with the husbands, wives, and then as we get into chapter 6, we'll be dealing with the children and work relationships. We're going to be dealing with a lot of those things um, today. So let, let's go ahead and get right into the reading, and uh, we'll start with chapter 5 right from the very beginning, and then we'll pick up from where we left off on last week. Chapter 5. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. All right, here we go. Chapter 5. All right, just a, a brief understanding as to how we got here. All right, once again, chapters 1, 2, and 3 talked about what God has done for us. And we kind of put that in a nutshell. We gave the illustration that when someone gives you something wonderful, it's then easy for someone to ask you to do something for someone else. And we gave the example. I said if I was to tell Haywood to give Mary $100,000, he would look at me like, but then if I give him a million dollars first, and then say, I need you to give Mary $100,000. I have now equipped you to do the task, right? And so that's what it is when it comes down to living for the Lord. So we talked about that for chapters 1, 2, and 3. That God says, look at all I have given you. The grace, the righteousness, 
I've given you the opportunity to have my joy, to have my peace. And since I have given you all of that, I would like for you to emulate the things that I have. Now, the thing about it is your practice of emulating what I have given you is not going to go on your record. What's on your report card? Whose righteousness is on your report card? Christ's righteousness. So there is no failure or success because of what you do. The failure or success is upon who you believe as your Savior. But what he does say is that we should do a, we should walk as he walks. So that's what we get into when we get into chapter 4, chapter 5, and then again in chapter 6. And chapter 5 picked that up and it said, Be ye therefore, the therefore is since you have all those blessings, followers of God as dear children. All right? So we talked about that and how we are to emulate the Lord and we're supposed to take on his what? His nature, his characteristics. He's teaching us things. We're following him through his word. All right? And then we also emphasize that Paul is talking to who? The Ephesian church. Church in Ephesian, you look at the history, what kind of false worship that they have? They worship the goddess of Diana, which was a uh, fertility goddess. And they practice their worship by... Uh, uh, going into temple prostitutes. And so it was important that Paul had to bring out some of their cultural behavior and show them that some of the behavior that you're doing out there is incorrect. So he said uh, that we should walk uh, as children of God. And then he goes into verse 3, which we talked about. He said, but fornication and, and uncleanness and covetousness and all those different things that he labeled, he said that you should not partake of that. So stop going up to that, what, temple prostitutes. But there are better things. Now, the thing about it is, we're going to see as he's connecting this, what can destroy the relationship between a husband and a wife almost instantly? Infidelity, right? And so what Paul is saying, because now he had to build up, you got to change your behavior first. So he dealt with the fornication part first. Now, as we're going to get into this, this part in chapter 5, he's going to deal with the what? The marriage. It makes no sense for you to go ahead and get married and try to follow the aspects of Christ when you have not first dealt with the aspects of your uncleanness, your behavior, because that's going to not allow you to have the successful what? Relationship or the successful marriage. So he dealt with that part first. All right? And then he said that, um, um, I don't want to go through all this again. He, took, he talked about the inheritance in verse 5, which is so important because when you walk with the Lord and you are his child, Walking straight or slew foot or knock knee or pigeon toe, you still his what? You still his child. And so what he is saying though, that if you don't walk according to his ways, you still are my child, but you have no what? Inheritance from me. I will not give you anything to do your bad behavior. If you walk according to my ways and you walk after the way I walk, everything I have belongs to what? To you. But when you walk outside of what I have called you to walk, you will still you are still my child, but I give you what? Nothing. You have no inheritance. All right? And so God saying, when you are a child of God, you are expected to walk upright, to walk proper. And then God's blessings will shower down upon you. And the thing about it is that a lot of times... Um, it doesn't always happen tick for tack. And that's the thing we have to keep in mind. God doesn't just, he's not a tick for tack guy. He, he'll allow you to mess up, mess up, mess up, keep going, mess up, mess up. But then it eventually, guess what's going to happen? The, inha the inheritance is taken back. All right? And um, it's something that you have to keep in mind. Verse uh, 11 and 12 talked about how we should not walk in what? In darkness. And how uh, we should reprove them to walk in darkness. And we talked about that whole aspect of how the world that we're living in now. All right? And we compared today's world to the Ephesian world. All right? And we talked about how, all right, well, they had the temple prostitutes and they were saying that, you know, uh, doing whatever you wanted to do, uncleanness and fornication, all that was part of their culture. And we said, well, well look at today. And we said, well, you can turn on the TV. You look at it, and we talked about, you know, sin to the max and show it all the time and HB Holes and all them different shows. It, it, it glorifies and, and, and celebrates it, right? Well, um, 
and, and we talked about how in verse uh, 12 it says, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. So some of this stuff should make you feel ashamed. You, sh you should look at it and go, this is not right. It should, get, it should get to that point. Just because this person met this person and you sit there and you watch the, the, you know, the TV show or the movie or sometimes even your friends, people in real life that you know, and they met, they met, and then now they, they you know, they shack it up. And see, the, the Christian church oftentimes kind of harps on the aspect of the, uh, 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 the homosexual relationship as being wrong, which it is, but we kind of lax on the on the infidelity aspect of it. When both of them, in God's eyes, are the same, they're both wrong, and so you have to keep that in mind that God is dealing with that. And then he and then he talked about in verse 15, and I'm just kind of highlighting some points here so we can get to where we left off at, where he says, "See then that you what walk circumspectly, not as what fools." But as what? As wise. And we, we talked about how, what does the Bible describe a fool? The Bible always depicts the fool as a person that says there is what? No, no God. <laughs> so when you're dealing with people that say there is no God, you're dealing with people that are walking according to God's definition. And God's, uh, uh, and I was about to say God's opinion, but you know what? God don't have an opinion. God has only truth. So as, call, as, as far as God has uh, 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 told us, people that say there is no God, are foolish, point blank, all right? And so uh, Paul is bringing all of this in because he's about ready to close up this letter, all right? And so we kind of got to where we, where we were uh, upon last week, and he talked about how the things that you should do to help strengthen yourself. He said, don't do things in excess. In verse 18, he says, do, be not drunk with wine, whereas what is in uh, excess, but be ye filled with the what? The Holy Spirit. Spirit. The only thing that you have the right to indulge in is the, the walking and the, and the relationship with the, uh, with the Spirit of God. Anything else has to be done with what? With proper moderation. And then talked about the things that help keep you joyful and, and, and because we got to keep our joy. The scripture talks about the fact that the joy of the Lord is your what? Strength. Strength. So in verse 19, he says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. All right singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. All right? And we talked about how, you know, that, that, that's the aspect of Psalms talked about everyday life. And so sometimes people think, well, the only kind of music you're supposed to listen to is gospel music. And, and I, I would disagree with that. There's a lot of songs that are nice songs, and they have nothing to do with, you know, them, them, them dealing with gospel aspects, but they talk about things that are positive. Mm -hmm. And Psalms talk about everyday living. And you can go to the book of Psalms, and the book of Psalms talks about everyday living. It talks about all kinds of different stuff. And so you can sing about all kinds of different stuff. But the thing about the book of Psalms is whatever it talks about, it talks about it in a, in a what? Positive and a God-respectful way. It always has the aspect that God is still in control. And so, yes, you can. But then it, it even brings out the aspect that, yes, you can speak in Psalms and hymns. And then also, what? Spiritual songs. So, yes, sometimes we do need to incorporate some good spiritual songs in our thing. And because that brings out the what? The joy. Just the feeling, the feel good. You know, sometimes you ever, you ever just like have a, you just be walking around and a song come on and you just be like, yeah, I like that song. You know, it, it has that ability to do that to you. And there's nothing wrong with that. And it's okay. But what Paul is saying, I, and, and this is going back way back then. You know, I don't know what they had back then, you know. Whatever they, they, don't have, they had any heavy D or you know, Michael Jackson or whatever back in the day, I'm sure they had what they had. But the reality of it is that when they were feeling down, you know, sing a song. When that earth went in fire, you know, sing a song. Yeah, I don't want me to get started because I can't say. All right. So then that kind of brings us to where we left off at. You know, verse 20 it says, "Giving thanks." How how often? Always, Always. for all things. Unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks to God for all. And see, and that's why you can sing the song above that. Because no matter what happens, I have to find the understanding that God is still in control. And I can rejoice in it. All right? Now, even Jesus talked about it. He said, 
when men revile you, persecute you, and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake, what should you do? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. All right? So it's teaching us that we have to redefine the aspect of what brings joy to you. When you are walking in the ways of the Lord, therein is your joy. Not because you got the big job, although that certainly can make you happy, but the joy comes from, I walk in the ways of the Lord, that makes me happy. You know, I got the big money, I got the, I got the, 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 the nice boyfriend, I got the nice girlfriend, I got the nice house, I got the nice car, you know, I got the nice you know, suit of clothes. Or All that stuff is okay. But your permanent and fundamental and foundational joy should be what? That I know the Lord. All right? And that I'm following in his ways. All right. So that brings us to where we left off last week and the week before. Verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now, it's important that before we go any further, because it's going to deal with this aspect of, of, of relationship, what did it say? Look at this. Let's break this down. Submitting yourself one to a what? Another. All right. Now, when you say submitting yourself one to another, that means that at least you're dealing with how many people? At least. Two. At least two people. So if you're dealing with two people, both people have to be willing to allow the other person to have their way at some point. That's what submitting means, right? So it's, when you submit one to another, I'm not going to be dogmatic. It's got to be my way. Because now I'm not what? I'm not submitting. But at the same time, you have to be with a person that will also have that what? Same rule of thumb. However... If you happen to be in a situation where you're dealing with a person that never will submit, do you say, well, then I'm never going to submit? You can't do that. Even if you happen to be in that kind of situation, and that's where you really have to understand, you have to trust and walk with God. This, somehow or another, you got into a situation, this person never bends. They're always right. they always got to be my way. You still have to learn that there are times when you still got to submit, even even though from a, a human nature standpoint, you want to go, oh, oh, you going to be like that? Well, I, I can show you. I can be like that too. Boom. And then what happens? Now there is what? No hope. But when one person never submits and the other person decides, well, I will still do my part. I'm going to submit. Then you can still begin because that's where the, the lesson is taught. And that's where you become... Like it says in the scripture, people always quote this wrong. The scripture says that we are to be a witness. A lot of times people quote it says we are to we are to witness or we are to go witness or we are to witness. To, it says be a witness. And that means that you just are. So when you're doing right, you're doing your part, that speaks to people more so a lot of times than you telling them you need Jesus, you need that. You know, just do what you're supposed to do. So this aspect, and, and, and it's important that we keep in mind the submitting one to another. Now, the next portion that comes to that is what? And here's where you have to recognize, in the fear of who? Of God. So, so you say, well, I'm sure you would have the question, well, if, this, if I'm dealing with a person that doesn't submit, and then I have to submit, what am I looking for? I'm looking for times that they happen to be, even though they may not be godly, but, you know, even a broken clock is right, what, twice a day, <laughs> right? So when they happen to line up with the things of God, you quickly do what? Submit. Even though their lining up wasn't because they, they, they care for God or think about the things of God, it just happened that way. You know, just like how, how, you take the batteries out of that clock. What time that clock say right now? 11.31. 11.31. So at 11.31 tomorrow, if you take the batteries out, it would be correct. And at 11.31 tonight, it would be correct. Right? But it, it, it ain't doing nothing. But still doing nothing, you can still end up being correct two times a day. So even people that don't even care about God sometimes can say some of the right things. And so when, you, when you're dealing with a person, you say, well, it's impossible to submit to some people. Well, 
Not if you really focus. Sometimes, and then that lets them know, wow, you're going to do, yeah, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it that way. Because you just happen, even though you didn't mean it and you didn't intend to, you lined up with things that are proper with scripture and things that are proper with God. So yeah, I'm going to do it your way. And you let them know. Now what you're doing is you're letting them see that even as mean and ornery as they can be, you still can do what? Submit. But you line up. And that's why it's important. You don't stop at the part where it says submitting yourself one to another. You can't stop there. How do you submit? In the fear of the Lord. Fear of God. All right, so now we get to chapter, I mean, to, to, to uh, verse 22. All right, because this is where the part, because a lot of times people will start at verse 22 without reading verse 21 to understand. All right, so verse 22 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your husband. Is that what it says? No. Is that what it says? No. What did I leave out? What, did I, what word did I leave out? Own. All right? And that's important. Don't leave that. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands. But now, let's keep going. As what? Unto who? The Lord. So there is a, there, there is a lot of communication of, of direction here. First of all, it didn't say women. It said what? Wives. Wives. See, so it's not until you enter into that relationship of what? Marriage. Once you get into that relationship of marriage, then there is an aspect where God says, I didn't make the rule. God made the rule. God says, I'm going to deal with, with this family through this husband. That's the way God says he's going to deal with it. God says, I'm going to deal with this family through the, through the man. Now, if the man don't act right, the man don't, I'm still going to be working through him. But you still have a what? Relationship with God. And God will still give you things because you, just because you marry a person, all of a sudden God says, okay, I don't need to talk to you ever again. No. You st but when it comes down to situations about the f that, that relationship, about that family, God says, my way of dealing with that, I want to work with y'all through the husband. Just like he worked with Adam and Eve through who? Through Adam. And if you remember when, when Eve ate up the fruit, what happened? Nothing. Nothing. It wasn't until who? Adam. When Adam ate. That's when God says, okay, so now, now uh, I'm going to have to deal with this. And there's a lot I can say about that, but if I do, we will be, we'll be in this chapter again for another week. <laughs> so I'm going I'm to try just to move along. But it's important to keep that in mind. I mean, we could go back to that story and see. Because Adam, there's a scripture that says that Eve was deceived, mm -hmm. but Adam sinned what? Deliberately. Well, why did he sin deliberately? Because he wasn't deceived. He sinned deliberately because what? Eve ate. And he knew that Eve had done something that disobeyed. And that's why Adam, in his, um, in his role, is a, still a type of Christ. Because Adam says, well, since you ate, I, I will eat, so whatever happens to you happens to me. You see? And so, but then Adam actually, as we get to this, he did one of the things. He said, well, I will give my life to still be with you. All right? Because he... he I mean, Adam was he was he was a perfect individual, perfectly made by God, and his and in his perfection, not having all wisdom, he said, "Well, whatever happens to you will happen to me," and he deliberately ate, all right, uh, knowing that he was bringing this problem onto people. But he did not want Eve to be out there by herself, nor did he want not to have her, because when God brought Adam Eve to Adam, what did Adam say? Whoa, <laughs> this is whoa, man. <laughs> so, so he, so he, you know, like I said, I, I, let me move on because I, I can, I can talk a whole half hour on that aspect. But um, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands. All right, that means the man that marries you puts the ring on your finger and causes both of y'all to leave uh, mother and father. All right, as unto the Lord. 
And it should be unto the Lord. So wise, when you're in a situation, when you're dealing with an individual, you have to pray that, that he will submit, that, that the man will submit himself to who? To God. To God. That's your prayer. Because that man does not submit himself to God. Then you are in, you, you, you can, you, it's going to be rough. Because he's going to do everything he want to do. And you're trying to get him to recognize the things that God would like us to do. And he ain't even hearing about it because he ain't submitted to God. So now the, the, the whole family structure is, is, is cut off because the man is not hearing anything that God has to say. And it's going to be difficult. All right. Now, let's keep going. Verse 23. For the husband is the what? Head of the wife. That's what, that's what the scriptures say. Like I said, I didn't make it. God says... The husband is the one I'm going to deal with. God says, I'm putting the husband in charge. But when you're in charge, guess what you also have? Responsibility, responsibility for everything. You are responsible, husband. So that means you are responsible for knowing scripture. You're responsible, well, for loving your wife. And we're going to deal with that. You are responsible. And God will hold you accountable. We talked about that on last week, right? You, you, you live in, in Westchester, and you come to a red light, you make a right on, you look for traffic, you can make a right on red. red. Go down to New York City, and you do it, you're going to get a what? A you're going to get a ticket. And they don't want to hear that, well, I didn't know that I couldn't do it in the city. They, they, that don't matter. You, you got to know. You're responsible to know. Same thing with the husband. The husband can't say, well, I didn't know nothing about the things about you are responsible to know because it's here. It's opportunities. It's everywhere. God is saying that you can find me. All you need to do is want to know me. So you have to want to know. To be ignorant of the law is a lot of times because you just didn't want, you didn't, I didn't care to even check it out. And you ha the responsibility is for you to know. So husband is the head of the wife even as... Christ is the head of the church. So now it automatically compares Christ to the husband, the church to the what? To the wife. All right, and keep that comparison. Even as Christ is the head of the church. And look at this. And, uh, uh, and is the what? Savior of the body. All right. So the, the, uh, the church was saved by Christ. And the relationship of the family is saved or sanctified by the husband. When the husband believes and the husband trusts and the husband has God as his head, that family has the flow of God going into it. It didn't, it didn't say that the husband has to be perfect because is there such thing as a perfect husband? No. Is there such thing as a perfect wife? No. But you do need to be able to work in line, and that's why he says that we are to um, uh, love the, the, the uh, uh, what did it say? Uh, the, the husband, the, the wives are to submit unto their husband as unto God, as or as unto the Lord. That's why that's there each time, as unto the Lord, as unto the Lord. All right, uh, because you're going to have to look at him. He, he ain't the Lord, but as I got to look at him as if. He was as perfect as the Lord because he ain't as perfect as the Lord. Amen. All right. All right. Look at verse 24. Any questions on this? Before I'm, we might have, all right. Look at 24. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their what? Own husbands in some things. In everything. everything. You see that? So look at what it's saying here. It's saying that if you have that kind of husband, and, 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 and once again, let's go back. Look at what verse 21 says. Look at verse, what does it say? Submitting yourselves one to another in the what? Fear of God. Does that apply to the husband? Yes. All right, so now when we come back here, and we look at verse 24, it says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject unto their own husband. So the wife will say, you know, I'm looking for, to you for direction. Now, what is the husband supposed to say? 
he goes, well, the scripture tells us that we ought to submit what? One to another. So as you submit to me, I then now have the right and the obligation and the scriptural legality to submit to you. But if the husband don't understand that, or if he misunderstood it, or if he only reads that one verse, then he's going, oh no, you just submit to me. That's what the Bible says. No, but the scripture before that says we are submit, are supposed to submit one to another. But it only happens, and this is where you ladies have to understand, you guys initiate it. You guys start it. You're the starter. You're the starter of life. You're the starter of so many things. You guys start it. Once you, once you start the submission, uh, a domino effect is supposed to continue to flow. But you guys have to start it. And a lot of things, probably unawares, is in your hands. The, the, uh, I can't go, I, I, I ain't going to have time to go through all that. But let me just say this. A lot of issues that we have today are because women refuse to still start things properly. All right? And, and it's, I could, that's just how it is. When a man knows I don't have to uh, do anything and can still get all my needs met, uh, I'm not, I don't want to get too, too, but I can get all my, my needs met, and I don't have to submit or, or not submit, commit to anybody. Now, what is he going to do? He's going to continue on. But if, if you have, if the, if the majority of the women say, no, we don't play that. We don't do that. You're going to pick one. Now, you may not be picking me, but you're going to pick somebody. But you, know, you ain't going to have all of us. You're going to have to pick somebody and put a ring on their finger. Now, there's ten of us here. You pick one. And so the guy's going to have to do what? Submit. He's going to he gonna have to commit to, to one of them mm -hmm. if he wants to move on in, his, in, 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 in a, uh, 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 a relationship that brings forth the, the things that he desires. All right? So you, if, all, and if you draw the scenario, you take a room filling with ten women, one guy. Now, if all the women say, well, you can be with me, you can, or you can be with me, you can be with me. Now, the guy ain't got to commit to nobody. But he gets to be with whoever he wants to. He, he, life is great, as far as he's concerned, when he has no understanding of God or rules or regulations. He's like, well, hey, you know what? If I feel like, I feel like red on Tuesday and blue on Monday and brown on Thursday, and he gets his pick. He can just pick what he wants. But if the women say, absolutely not, you get nothing until you commit. Now, who makes that rule up in the first place? God did, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He knows what he's talking about. Now the man's going to be like, well, I'll, I'll just go, well, you go, you, go to, you go to number three. Number three says, no, you ain't have nothing here. Then he said, all right, well, I'll just go to number seven. Number seven, you ain't get nothing here? Well, I'll just go to number, number ten. Number ten, nothing here. So now he begins to realize, I guess I'm going to have to pick somebody. But society-wise, that has completely what? Broken down. Mm -hmm. So now, unless the guy already has an understanding that he wants to please the Lord, he has no reason to. He has no reason to, 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 to want to commit to, a, to, a, to one woman. Why should I? What? I mean, and, and logically speaking, why should he? If he has no fear of God, why should he? There's no reason why he should. I mean, if, if, if there was no God, and, and I know there is, so I'm not a fool, but if there was no God and that was the playing field, I think all guys would be like, well, if that's the way it is, then you know, I have no, no rights or wrongs, and a lot of times guys believe there's no right or wrong. Why should I? But unless you have that, some guys think God has an inner compass. And there's, there's a good compass. You, you, know, you meet some, some they're just good guys. Mm -hmm. They got inner compass. There are some things, even though they may not truly know God, and that's what God speaks about in Romans, that you can know me a variety of ways which will always draw you to my spirit and to my word. And generally that guy will end up, his inner compass, it's kind of like how 
a, a, a bird that's born on one of these islands out here, and then he flies somewhere else during the, during the summertime. Now, how does he know how to get back? He, those birds have an inner compass. There's some kind of magnetic compass in them. They know how to get back to the island. They, they, they know road signs. You, tell, you can tell me to go to Florida, take all the road signs off the street. I will be in Texas somewhere because I don't know where I'm going. I need the road signs. But the birds have that inner compass. There are a lot of people, a lot of us, have that inner compass that we listen to. I should rephrase that. We all have that inner compass. Some of us just don't what? We don't listen to it. Because that inner compass will draw you to the things of God. Now, if you meet a guy or if you meet a girl that has an inner compass and yet they don't know the Lord, they still will be drawn towards the things of the Lord and they still feel that there's some rights and wrongs. There's something good about that. Something right that you can see. But the reality of it is, ladies... A lot of the responsibility, well, that's why Jesus says, I should say Paul says here, that, that the wives are to start the submission. You guys really started on a, on a lot of levels. A lot of levels. See? Just because God says, I'm going to I'm gonna talk to the man, don't make the man better. Now, let's go back to the tribes, the, the, the 12 tribes of Israel. Which tribe did God say, I'm going to talk to for this, for this nation? The, the tribe of what? Levi. The Levites were the priestly what? Tribe. And so God said, all the Levite, everybody that's born, uh, all the descendants of Levi will be the priests. And I will talk to them for the nation. All right? But did that make that nation a better nation? I mean, I mean, should say that tribe a better tribe? They had problems and issues. And when Jesus came, did Jesus come through the tribe of Levi? No. Which tribe, tribe did he come through? Judah. Judah. All right. So just because God says, I chose to make you the one I speak to, don't mean you can't get the aspect, well, God sees him as better. No. God just said, that's my avenue of discussion. Well, once again, if I'm driving from here to Florida, I got to go through New Jersey. But just because I got to hit New Jersey first, does it make New Jersey better than Florida? No. No. It's just, that's just the direction I have to go from where I am. And from where the human race is, that's the direction God says he's going to go. I'm coming through the husband first. Now, if the husband doesn't do his due diligence, God has, on many occasions, through scripture, bypassed the husband and gone to the who? To the wife. And that's happened. We can talk about Nabal and Abigail. We can talk about a few, you know, quite a few situations. We can look at uh, uh, Ruth and, 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 and Esther. Yeah. A lot of situations where God said, well, I'm just going to have to bypass this guy because he, he ain't here. I'm going right to you. And so it does happen. But that's not how it was set up. So it's important to keep in mind that if we, these are some of the qualities. When you start looking, you know, you get to the point, well, I want to start looking for a mate. These are some of the things that you need to understand. Otherwise, you're just bringing, you're just bringing in problems. You're bringing in issues that you, that you think you're going to fix later. But it ain't, go, ain't no guarantee that those things are going to get fixed. You got to try to understand them now. Because being alone is okay, and it hurts, but it's okay when you are alone. But painfully, there is nothing more painful than being with somebody and still being alone. Mm. Yes, right? that's, that's where you really feel the hurt and the pain. Because now, you, you're kind of stuck. I'm, I, I still feel alone. And I don't have the right to, to go out and, and look for somebody. Because I've already supposedly had somebody. Now you're stuck, so to speak. But understand, there is no stuckish with God. And I know I made up a word, but <laughs> stuckish. <laughs> my, the, my English major daughter looking on me like, Lord Jesus. Now I'm telling you, my dad can make up a word in a minute. Stuckish. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's move along. All right. Let's get down to verse 25. Look at this. All right. Husbands, love your wife. Wait a minute. Break so Did any part of that? Did it say wives love your husband? Did you see that anywhere? Husband. 
Yeah. But did you see anything about the wives loving the husbands? It said husbands love the wives. He didn't have household. It just says for the wives to do what? Submit. Submit. But it's hard to submit to somebody that you don't what? Respect. Husband, wives need to have a re respectful love. Husbands have to have just love, crazy love. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Let me show you wives. You just got to have, I'll do anything for that woman kind of love. That's what a husband's supposed to have. Look at what it says. Husbands, love your wife even as Christ also loved the church. Now, you can stop there if you want to, but you really need to keep going. And gave himself for it. He allowed himself to be whipped, spit upon, his beard pulled. They, they uh, uh, punched him in the face. They blindfolded him. They, they did, and then they hung him on a cross for his woman. Who's, and, and what woman is that? The church. You, gotta, you need him. Will your man do that for you? If you do, then he, if he, if he won't, then you, you're not dealing with the right. That's why you need to have a godly man. Because a godly man understands his responsibility. Right? Then, and then, if you know, my man will give his life for me. He will do that. It's, you then automatically build, it, it just builds in what? Respect. Which is what you're supposed to have. That respect to submit. And to follow what God gives him. And keep in mind, it's not follow the man, but it says as unto the Lord, right? So you're following the man as what? As God gives things to him. Because ultimately, the only thing we are supposed to follow is who? Jesus. Jesus. So Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Right. And so the husband has the right to say to the wife, follow me as I follow Christ. Right. Don't follow you, you, you get, follow me as I follow craziness. <laughs> no. We ain't, you, you don't do that. You don't submit to that. Follow me as I follow, you know, whatever. No. So at the same time, the wife, you have to have a, a you can see, these are very simple statements, but they carry a lot of weight. There's a lot to this. All right? So the husband has to be in a situation where he, I will give my life it don't matter how wonderful or how great my life is. I have to make sure that my wife is enjoying the things that I can provide. And therefore, you know, you know, it, it's it's a sad situation when you see a husband. He, you know, he's got the, you know, the, the silk suits and he's driving a nice car and, and all that kind. Of, and the and the wife just just hobbling along on the back. On the back, bitch, You know that's. That's just messed up. There's something wrong with that picture. All right? Now, yes, there should be some equality. But then when there cannot be, when circumstances are that there cannot truly be equality, the husband should say, well, baby, you get the, uh, the good situation. I'll take the rough. I'll, I'll, I'll go up the rough side of the mountain, and I'm going to move you up the smooth side as, as much as I can. There should be that giving of himself. And if a man is not willing to give of himself, he ain't ready for this. He ain't ready for marriage. He ain't ready. And he's got to be looking at how can I provide? How can I sustain? How can I maintain? That's why man ain't got no job. I mean, right off the bat, that tells you, listen, okay? <laughs> There's some, baby, you need some more time. You are not done. Put him back in the oven. He ain't, he ain't fully cooked. You got to be able to, to provide. All right, and you got to be able to care. You you know you meet a man. You, sometimes you watch how they handle things that are inferior to them, like children or pets. Right? I know. Something up in the grocery store. That that. You know, little things that you notice that, that that things how he managed things where he has all power over. You know, you can do what you want. And I remember my my I had a cousin, and we had a. We had a, uh, 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 it was an apartment building, and they had a little inside downstairs. Like, you went down the stairs, and it was like a little spiral type of thing. But then, anyway, there was this cat that had came up the stairs from the outside. And I was, like, trying to get the cat out. You know, get, get him out of here for it, you know. My cousin went over there, trapped the cat in the corner, and stepped on him. And I'm like, wait, why would you step on that cat? And he, he gave me no answer. 
I'm like, and the cat, you know, he kind of spit up a little bit and then he ran. And I'm like, but that let me know there's something. And now, but that, that was my partner. You know how some of you growing up, you know, that was my buddy, that was my partner. I was hanging with him. But I never forgot that. I said, like, something ain't right. And then as circumstances went along, we separated because uh, I had moved and different things. Later on, when I met Wade, Wade was a thug. He was a thug and ended up in jail and all that kind of stuff because he didn't have that right compassion, that right, you know, ability to care about things that are less fortunate than him or less powerful than him. Anything he had con complete power over, he dominated. And so when you marry somebody like that, yeah, so you have to be careful. And uh, I just pray, I hope, Lord, just wherever way it is today, Lord, bl bless him. But um, so we see here, it, are you kidding me? What happened to the time? <laughs> Lord Jesus. All right, 26. All right, uh, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the what? Washing of water by the who? Word. By the word. That man has to be able to allow God to, to wash him, wash his family, his entire thing. And I can do all these things through God by the washing of, of the water, which is represented by the word. The word helps keep me cleansed. It helps keep my family cleansed. 27. That he might present it to himself a what? Glorious church or a glorious what? Wife. Remember, we're doing these interchangeable. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be what? Holy and without blemish. All right. So when the woman, you know, the man, you shake his hand, his hand is smooth as butter. You shake the woman's hand, she's got callus and everything on her hand because she's doing all the work. That ain't the way it's supposed to be. The man should take the burden. He should take the, the load. All right? And the woman is there to encourage him, to lift her up. Now, let me just say this. There are some women that, that when it comes down, when you, you happen to marry somebody, you can run rings around your husband because you may be smarter than he is and you may have more to do than he and all that. Um, and, and, but at the same time, there still is that aspect of being able to start things. You got to start and the encouragement that, yeah, you may not, you may not feel that you was in, that intelligent or you know you had the best schooling or whatever the case, but I'm going to show you where you are smart at, what you are good at. Look at what you were able to do. Look what you built. Look what you said to that other person. Look how you helped that person. Look how. You, and so there's always that starting of the domino effect of encouragement, because once you start it, then guess what? Then he's going to be like, well, I thank you because you do this for me, you did that, and it goes back and forth. All right? It's never it's never always perfect, but it still should be there. All right. And that helps to eliminate. That's that, that inner washing that allows you to get out all those wrinkles and spots and things that, that, that uh, and blemishes that we're trying to move out of relationships. Just like Christ is trying to move all that out of the church. We are the church. And let me tell you, there's some spots, blemishes, and wrinkles in here. But what does Christ do? He covers it with his righteousness. All right? And so, and um, a lot of this stuff, let me just say this. A lot of the stuff you're going to have to learn. You don't get into it knowing it all. And, and there's certain things, no matter how much you read, or how much somebody else talks to you, and how much you listen to what's being said, you just got to go through it. And marriage is one of those things, when you get married, you're going to learn because each, each two, the husband and wife, are different. And y'all are going to have a whole different chemistry than anybody else. So you, what you can't do is try to do things like Sally and, 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 and Alex and, or, or Mary and Ted. You've got to do things like you and you. You've got to find, but yet you do want to get into the word, and that's the important aspect where you follow what Scripture has said. Can I borrow some time, y'all? Can y'all give me like, like seven minutes? You give me, I don't leave but seven. Okay. I don't leave but seven. All right. Uh, verse 28. So ought the man... To love, so ought men rather, to love their wives as their what? Own bodies. When my wife is hurt, I'm hurt. All right? You, you stomp your toe, what do you do? You grab the toe. When the wife is hurting, the man should be there for the wife. He's supposed to be there. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Now, you can't get too much play of that. 
that man don't love you, he don't really understand how to love himself. He don't understand. And that's something that God gives. All right? It's important that we understand that. Look at verse 29. For no man ever yet hateth his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, even as the, uh, the Lord the church. Well, some people say, well, I know some men that don't, don't like themselves. Well, let me, let me explain something. Even a person that, that doesn't like themselves to the point to where they, say, commit suicide or something. I, I don't like who I am. I just, I just go kill. The reason why that person doesn't like the way it is because they believe they're supposed to be like whatever. This is how I think I, my life should be this. And because my life is not this, rather than them deciding to go out and to find a way to make it as close to this as can, they go, well, if I can't be this, then I don't want to be nothing. And they go hang themselves or whatever. But that's all out of self-love because they think so much of themselves that I have to be this. And if I'm not this, I don't want to be anything. Mm -hmm. That's craziness. Mm -hmm. But it's self-love. It's all about self. Right? And so, and that's how you got to watch out because there are a lot of guys like that too. And, and a lot of them have that same philosophy, but they twist it from, if I can't have this girl, mm -hmm. nobody can have her. And what do they end up doing? Mm -hmm. They end up killing them. Do, do we see the stories on TV? Mm -hmm. Boyfriend does what? And all that comes out of, out of a morbid, so, so when, the, when the Bible says that no man ever hates himself, it's all sin comes from selfishness to some degree. All of it comes from some kind of self. Remember the very first sin that was what? Pride. And pride is about what? Self. And so all of, that's the root of all sin. All sin stems from selfishness. Self, uh, 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 just selfishness. <laughs> Sorry. It's just that I'm about to make, create another word, but I'm, I'm going to stop. <laughs> selfishness. I'll just leave it there. <laughs> Selfishness. I was about to say something like that. I don't know. <laughs> all right. 30. For we are members of his body. Now, body speaking of who? Christ. Right. Members of his body, of his flesh, and his bones. So we are all part, you, you are part of the, the you know, the, the Jones family, the Smith family, you know, but you are still all part of what? The family of God. All right, so we always keep that in mind, that your family is still part of the family of God. 31, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his what? His wife. wife. And they too shall be one flesh. That is a key point. You cannot. Well, we're we going to get married. But my mama's still going to be my number one girl. That ain't going to work. That's that happens. <laughs> and, and, yeah, it's, it's, it sounds funny, don't it? But, it's like, but it does happen. It, it, it is. That wife would be like, well, I want to go to Burger King. Well, we can't because my mama said we're going to McDonald's. <laughs> you can't cook. My mama cooks. All right. Yeah. So, and that, all of that is learned. And, you know, because you, you, you know, my mama cleaned this way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that ain't how I clean. Mm -hmm. All right. And there's a, oh, boy, I could tell you some, could tell you some stories, boy. You, to you got to keep them. You have to separate yourself from your your, your, your parents, and you've got to develop your own relationship. Your, your, the influence of your, of your parents should be at a, a minimum where they can give you some advice and maybe a little help here or there. But as far as when it comes down to making decisions, it is your responsibility. Y'all are one. All right? And then it's important, too, because the parents should be reading this and go, okay, well, they they married. Y'all go on now. I won't be with you. Now, yeah, like Mary's talking about old fashioned parents. They be like, y'all, y'all, get out, get out. <laughs> they throw you right on out, and you come ask for a couple dollars. No, we ain't. No, no. y'all go do it. <laughs> do it yourself. I ain't got no money for you. But there is a balance to all of that. And yes, a, the, do you do you still love your child? Though they're married, of course you do. Do you still want to see them do well? Of course you do. But when it comes down to that husband and that wife, you gotta know. Listen, now I'm watching this wife. And <laughs> you go in that, you go into the house. 
and you look and you see the stove got some grease on it. Now you know. Now I ain't never had my son had no grease on his stove. <laughs> and you got it, but you got it. No. Zip it up because that ain't that ain't your house. Mm. I go if I go there and I happen to look and I'm looking, man, this grass is four feet high. I ain't my child ain't never lived in no house with no four feet high grass. But what do I what do I gotta do? Yeah, you I gotta, I gotta hush it up. So maybe I gotta go around, you know, and say, you know, hey, son-in-law, how you? Uh, yeah, you know, I found out they gotta sell on lawnmowers down here. You, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you, you got, you, you got, you gotta be real careful about that. You sometimes it's best just to leave it alone and you go pray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's important that that you learn how to allow them to be their relationship and not our relationship, all right? Because they are to become one flesh. But now, here's where Paul's about to throw something in here, man, I tell you. Now, look at, look at this. He says, uh, for, this, for this cause shall a man uh, leave his father and his mother, and they be joined uh, unto uh, his wife, and they too be one flesh. Two are one. Now, look at Paul saying in the very next verse. He says, this is a great mystery. And it is a mystery because um, there's an aspect where, like I had told you, how when God speaks to that family, he speaks to the head. Mm. It's just like when you, when you look at your body, as much as your body can, can go move along and do things, you watch these people to come back from war mm. and some of them are missing legs, you know, because they stepped on them, they missing arms. You don't see nobody coming back talking about they missing a head. Because once you're missing a head, you're done. But you see them missing almost everything else. You know, you, some people, you take one heart out and have to put an artificial heart in. There's all kinds. But you, they, they, you never seen an artificial head. The head is important. All right? So, therefore, it, look, it, it, it's one. I'm speaking to you as one unit. You are a body. But then he says, here's the mystery. But... I speak concerning Christ and the church. He's saying, you and Christ are one. Now, when he says this is a mystery, let me explain to you why this is a mystery. Um, when, when you have Mr. Smith, Mrs. Smith, and Brother Smith, and Sister Smith, all right, the four Smiths. And you say, well, I want all the Smiths to stand. And guess what happens? Who stands? All four. Okay. Now, Brother Smith goes out and marries Sister Jones. And Sister Jones is now Sister who? Smith. Sister Smith. So now, when we say, I would like for all the Smiths to stand, who stands? Even Sister, Sister Jones. Jones, who was now, because she is now what? Smith. She's now a what? A Smith. So, when, when we're married to, to Christ, and God says, I'm bringing the whole Godhead bodily together, who joined? Who's there? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But wait a minute, is the God the Son there just by himself? Yeah. Who does he bring with him? His bride. Do you see why the Bible says that we will judge angels? Mm -hmm. You see? Do you see why the Bible says that, that, that we are going to sit in heavenly places? Not just spiritual places, but we're going to help govern. We're going to help rule. You know, you've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over. Amen. So God is going to give us some of his role. We take on some of his nature. Now, some people take that and go, well, that means I'm going to be God. No, it don't no. mean you're going to be God. No. You are not going to be God. But what God is saying, I'm giving you the opportunity to sit where I sit, to be where I am. That's why Paul's saying, this is a, he doesn't say this is a mystery. He says this is a what? A great mystery. 
How does that? How do we go from being sinners on our way to hell to to sitting near the throne of God, governing with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? Because we are His what? We're bride. We're part of the what? The Godhead family. Which is to me, I I just can't comprehend all of that. That's why it's a great mystery. Even Paul said. He says, but I speak concerning the church. That's what we have to look for. That's why Jesus says, y'all ought to be happy. Just be joyful that you know the Lord. That should bring the joy. You know? All right? But, then he, then, but now he breaks off to that in verse 33. He says, nevertheless, let every one uh, of you uh, particular so love his wife even as himself. Speaking of the, the, the husband, to love his wife, and the wife see that she what reverence her husband. See, now what, what I, I can almost imagine Paul was about ready to talk about that great mystery, but he, nevertheless, I can't, I can't get into all that right now because he, remember Paul said, I was shown stuff that was what? Illegal to talk about. I can't even get into the whole aspect of it. It's too big. It's too big to describe. And I think that's one of those things. So he, he goes, this is a great mystery, but I speak of Christ, uh, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. We're going to take on his last name, or we have already taken on his last name. We're part of his family. All right. So when it says you are a what? Child of God. Just like that when, when, when my son got married, Jeanette is now my child. So when we went to go take pictures, and we went to take, and I said, I want a picture of all my children. And I told Jeanette, you get in there too, because you are now my what? My child. All right? And so God sees us as his what? His family. God the Father, God the Son, with his what? Bride. And God the Holy Spirit. So, but we, were, we are invited in. We are asked to come and, and take part of it. It is so big to where sometimes it's just hard to believe and hard to even accept. That actually, really? I mean, come on. I'm going to get to sit there with the, with the one that said, let there be light. Mm -hmm. And there was light. I'm going to be able to, 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 to be able to govern along with the one that said, you know, uh, let there be and all this stuff happen before there was anything. Amazing to me. And so when you think about that, look at what ignoring scripture, ignoring Christ, what we're going to lose. We got to put eternity as a real motivation. This is why I got to do this. It ain't all about now. It's about then. But then starts what? Yeah. Now. It starts now. All right. So we're going to stop. And uh, thank you for, the, for 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs>